That is absolutely huge news that has been announced by Russian President Vladimir Putin, that he is going to recognise the independence of Donetsk and Luhansk. These are two separatist-controlled areas in Ukraine. Uh, this statement was first put out by the Kremlin, who said that the President Putin had told French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz that he intends to sign this decree. But uh, right now he is currently making this statement uh, in regards to this to this announcement, but we actually have a translator here at the moment who has been telling me what he has been dis been discussing in this speech, and it hasn't made any reference to Donetsk and Luhansk at all. This is more of a history lesson in regards to what. Into, into regards into regards the history of the Soviet Union, rather, he's been saying that Donet that Ukraine doesn't actually exist. Ukrainian nationality doesn't exist. It was just more of a concept that has been created by Lenin. And the, when the Soviet Union first broke up, Russia was the one, the country that suffered the hardest, and they were the one that looked after Ukraine the most, really. But uh, over here on the ground, over in in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions over in Donetsk there has been emergency warning sirens that have been sounding across that region and over in Luhansk at the moment a large explosion occurred and blew up a car in the parking lot uh, at this hour really where Luhansk People's Republic re re representative uh, was a allegedly the target. Now these incidents most people are considering as part of a pretext for a large-scale attack by Russia and this such announcement from Putin could allow him to openly move troops into eastern Ukraine and end these talks with Kyiv. Many people are speculating because these announcements were pre-recorded that tonight might be a pretty heavy night on the red line there between Donetsk and Luhansk and the uh, and the Ukrainian government controlled regions there because of these announcements and it seems like they might have been uh, preparing themselves for some heavy shelling there. Bob and Heather. Uh, Sarah, I was kind of curious. You've been there I think a week or so now. I wanted to see how are people reacting now, especially compared to last week? Last week, Bob, people were already concerned about what was happening. These people have been living with this fighting for the past eight years. These ceasefire violations happen not just at the moment, but they happen nearly every day. This is something that they're used to. There's bomb shelters there, there's bunkers in people's houses. So this is something that they go through day in, day out. When we spoke to people on the ground, there, they said they just want this to end. They will, they will have any form of... Uh, they, they don't mind what the ending is as long as it, they get peace, regardless of how the peace comes, no matter what the outcome is. That's all they want at the end of the day. But it seems now that this is anything but peace, what we are going to have now. With the recognition of Luhansk and Donetsk as independent, which they are not because they, it's, this, is a Ukrainian, this is Ukrainian land which has now been occupied by separatists and is now being called independent, this sort of uh, announcement really is going to, like, is, will lead to anything but peace for the people in these areas along the red line in the Ukrainian land. I think that it's going to give them a really hard time and I think that they are going to be quite emotional at the moment. Uh, Sarah, are there any reports recently of any additional uh, false flag explosions or anything like that? I know last week when we spoke with you, that was continuing to happen. Well, Heather, there has been one, I just, as I just mentioned, there was that explosion that happened just right now uh, in the, at the Luhansk uh, government building of a car that just blew up. But where is, there is no reports on whether this uh, is happening right now, whether this actually happened previously as well, and we're only seeing the footage right now that's being released. We can never really tell whether things actually are happening in real time when they mm -hmm. come out of these areas. There is many things that never, nothing really seems to be what it actually is or as it appears when it comes from these areas. It's not until you check the metadata to see when it's actually recorded. This is what we've really, uh, really discovered when we see these videos that come out of these areas. So there is a lot of false flag incidents that do come out of, of Donetsk and Luhansk. Um, 
So we did have that incident that happened a moment ago. There was that large explosion. There has been uh, sirens, these emergency sirens that have been wailing throughout Donetsk today, which calls for, which alerts people that there is going to be trouble happening in the area. So we could be, we could be awaiting some more false flag incidents that could potentially be happening throughout the night, Heather.